Thank Thanks, you. Betty. You so, know, well, it, it, I got, I just got to reply to, to, to what he was laughing at is, you know, is the market slowing question mark? And he laughed. And, and, and the reason I threw that in there is because as usual, there's been some national stories, mainstream, you know, news organizations doing stories about, oh, inventory is starting to build up and this and that. And, oh my gosh, we are, we are so far away from a slowing real estate market. It's not even funny. So it, we'll be yeah. talking about that. Yeah, yeah. So I just wanted to mention, since Eddie mentioned, you know, we're here in office today. Aaron's also here in office today. If you call 448-8888, you'll reach the lovely Aaron. Uh, Aaron's one of our great realtors that's watching the phones while we're on the radio and can help you get paired up with the right realtor on our team to help you with your real estate goals. So call us at 448-8888 and get yourself uh, situated and taken care of for your new home needs. Yeah, for sure. So so Tracy, let's, let's talk about this term that's now kind of come into the mainstream is buyer fatigue. Right. When we're talking about real estate sales. And if you guys haven't been listening to us, oh, by the way, we're on show 373. Yay. 373. Um, Long time. You know, it, it's interesting because, of course, when we started this show, the market was a very different market than it is today. Uh, you know, it was, it was definitely a, a seller's, uh, excuse me, a buyer's market at that time. And Eddie was a lot different radio station then, too. Boy, and isn't that true? Think about how his station has grown and his listenership yeah. and his... Good um, point. Just everything about what he's done socially on social media and uh, affecting are, our market. Things change a lot in yeah. in five years, six years, seven, seven years, eight, eight years. How long? I don't remember how long. Anyway, I think it's almost, shows. almost eight years or something. Yeah. 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 Well, so, so buyer fatigue. So the, 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 it's, it's a new term. You know how terms come up and all of a sudden now everybody's saying it. It's buyer fatigue where, where buyers are frustrated. They put in multiple offers. Right, Tracy? Right. And it seems like, you know, they might have missed out on three or four houses so far. And they're thinking, I'm going to just throw in the towel and wait for the market to shift. And we've been talking about this with our team, with the whole real estate community. Don't throw in the towel. If you're looking to buy a home, don't throw in the towel. Don't let it frustrate you. Let's get you into a house. And there's some of the things that, you know, we do to help buyers and um, we're going to talk about one of those things, which is new home communities. Yeah, we'll get into that. There was a, I was in a, a mastermind group here earlier this week with a bunch of uh, other realtors, and, and there was a conversation. It's like, oh, the market's slowing down. We're only seeing five offers, not 20 offers. And, and, and that may sound a little funny, but I, I think what's also happened in our market, Tracy, is both the, the buyers that are, that are out there are a little better educated, kind of understand what's going on in our market now, right? A year ago, 10 months ago, you know, things were pretty, pretty frantic. And now everybody's a little more up to speed on how to work in this particular market condition, including the real estate agents. Right. And, and, and there are some real estate agents that maybe hadn't dealt with as many transactions as we see and how to work through, you know, what's going on in our market where we have super low supply, super high demand, and, uh, you know, people really want to get into a house and they're having a hard time finding it because there's just not uh, enough homes on the market for there are for the number of buyers that are out there. Right. So I don't so, think buyer fatigue is, let me just wrap this up. I don't think I think buyers are, are understanding what type of market we're dealing with in right now. And if and if you want to get a home, you're going to have to adjust to the way things are right now. And some of those things are to have already started working with a great local lender, have already had your credit checked, have had your employment verified, have already supplied some documentation. So the letter you get from a lender is a very strong lender letter, not a Based on what they told me, they appear to qualify letter. Basically, pre-approved versus pre-qualified. Two very different things. A very strong lender, typically local, that has a reputation to uphold, is holds a lot more weight than an out-of-area lender, for sure. But there's lots of things, so we'd be happy to talk with you about it if you want to know how to position yourself to be a strong buyer, besides just fi you know money-wise and yeah. price-wise, yeah. right? So Tracy, let's talk about new construction and 
you know, people hear, well, there's not enough homes on the market. And the first thing everybody would, would assume is, well, why don't we just build more? And, and we are, right? We, we really are. A lot of new neighborhoods. And we say we, I mean, we're talking, you know, community. local, our community, Albuquerque. There's a lot of new construction going on. It's honestly not as much as we probably need, but it is happening. So let's talk about some of those communities, Tracy. Sure. So a lot of new neighborhoods have come on. Okay, so, you know, we've got a lot of great builders, local and national. So we've got D.R. Horton, we've got Pulte, we've got Hakes Brothers, Twilight, Labrazo, uh, Westway, Stillbrook. I could go on and on I know, and you're on, gonna, right? you're going to feel bad because you're going to forget somebody. I know, it's and like, yeah. they're all our friends. We work with new construction all the time, which reminds me, of course, we can help you uh, find new construction. A lot of times people drive, they see a sign, they stop at one. They buy a house, but if they'd have driven a half mile further, there's probably another builder there that they could have also considered. So always great to hire a realtor to help you with your new home uh, communities as well as resale homes. So think about the different parts of town, Tigo. I was in um, northeast Albuquerque, and mm-hmm. Stillbrook is doing a new neighborhood that's about to be online right at Alameda and Louisiana. Okay. Um, great location just west of the Tin Can Alley. Yep. area yep. Um, very close to a, a middle and elementary and high schools that people mm-hmm. really like mm-hmm. um, that's coming online new homes um, some others in the northeast heights that we know about for sure um, the others we have uh, well th- there's the yeah, abrazo Savannah. community by um, the balloon park right right i was thinking of what the name of that in stillbrook is savannah Okay. And right. I drove by, the walls are up. It looks like the pads are ready to start construction. They have a, a, a model home uh, office nearby, so mm-hmm. you can stop in there. But there's others, right? So obviously, one of my favorites is um, D.R. Horton's doing a neighborhood infill project. So in Vista del Norte in North Rio Rancho near 528 and Idalia, right by okay. the judicial complex. Mm-hmm. Vista del Vista Entrada is the neighborhood there, and it's half acre lots. You said Vista del Norte. I know, I, I know. know. It's like, Vista, I'm like going, I got lost there for a second. Sorry. I know, two different neighborhoods. Vista Entrada, North yep. Rio Rancho, right at 528 yep. and 550, basically. Yep. Half acre lots, uh, underground utilities, paved streets, very quick to get out once the construction at 550 and 528 is done. It'll mm-hmm. be quick to the freeway. Mm-hmm. Um, they have picked up a bunch of half acre lots there and they're starting in the 400s on a half acre lot and they have an amazing, uh, uh, multi-generational floor plan, which we know has been popular. Really popular. Yeah. Lots of really great floor plans. They only have a few lots, though, so if that neighborhood interests you, call us right away. You said that, so let's just define that. Maybe people have not heard that before as a multi-generational home or multi-generational home design or floor plan. What what exactly are we talking about? Well, multi-generational could be two generations of family living together, Mm -hmm. right? So you've got sort of a, a suite where maybe it's a room for like living area as well as a bedroom and a kitchenette in the same house with a full kitchen. Um, They vary from floor plan and builder to builder. I showed some this week in Corrales and it was different, you know, custom homes all with different setups of how it, how multi-generational works. Um, It can be, you know, siblings of the same era that mm-hmm. want to live together and um, both want to have their space as well as combined space. It's It's been pretty common. Sometimes it's grandparents living with their, you know, grandchildren or grandchildren living with their pa- grandparents or parents with children or parents with their grandchildren. But it's combining households yeah. under one roof. So, Tracy, there is... Just to wrap up this conversation about new construction, there oh, is new ah, construction. We're not wrapping this oh, up yet. Well, sorry. I mean, there's mind. there's I, I, well, a couple new <laughs> neighborhoods I really want to talk about, right? Yeah, okay, go. I know we've yeah. got time. Yeah. So Las Lunas, yes. right? Las Lunas has been very hot. Houses selling quickly there. Um, there's a new neighborhood, also D.R. Horton. Yep. West of I-25, basically across from all the Facebook buildings. Yep. So right when you get off the freeway at the main exit for Las, uh, Las Lunas and you go west, on the south side there we have a neighborhood, right, that's mm-hmm. very established. And then just past that we have Jubilee, which is the active adult, 55 plus. Yep. And then if you go west just a hair further, 
we have the new D.R. Horton neighborhood with some beautiful home um, floor plans, brand new, just breaking ground. It's a brand new community, um, you know, really quick to the freeway, going to be great. Also building, there's several other builders building in Las Lunas from Eastland Hills to right off the freeway to the west. Yep. Um, uh, Hakes, um, Civage Homes, D.R. Horton, a lot of, lot of different builders right there. Another one is Mesa del Sol, which has really taken off lately, Tigo. And yeah. Mesa del Sol is just south of the freeway. So a lot of people that work downtown, uptown. The hospitals, UNM, really like Mesa del Sol. You know what's interesting, Tracy, is you, you think about Mesa del Sol and Mariposa, you know, extreme opposites geographically, you know, in, in our community. But those were, were big master plan neighborhoods that were done, you know, kind of toward the the end of, of the market boom back in 2000. Early 2000s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. early 2000s. And, and, and so for the most part, like uh, Mariposa, you know, there hadn't been a lot happening there in the last 10 years. Same thing at Mesa del Sol. Now that we we have a, a renewed demand in housing, not enough supply, these neighborhoods are really, really kicking in, Mariposa in particular. Right. Oh, my gosh. I, I've been out there quite a bit lately, which is northwest Rio Rancho um, yeah. by the Armory, sort of. And, you know, Mariposa was developed by the same developer that did High Desert in Northeast Albuquerque. Right. Really well planned with a beautiful community center, different neighborhoods within the neighborhood. So they have estate properties where you can buy a piece of land, an acre or more, and build your estate home. Um, D.R. Horton's there, Twilight's there, Pulte's there. I'm sure there's others, but you know, it's some great views back to the mountains in the city. You know, if you've never been in North Rio Rancho to look back at the Sandias, you're missing out. I know when we're in the Northeast Heights, we think we have the best view of the mountains, but getting to the other side of the river and looking back can be pretty spectacular. There's some, there's some gems all over for sure, Tracy. For West sure. side, yeah. the trails, we've yep. got a lot going on there as well. Hakes Brothers, uh, DR just picked up some. Pulte's got a new neighborhood coming, a couple. So so if you're thinking new construction, it's a great opportunity for buyer fatigue. So I just want to tie it up with that, right? Yeah. Um, getting a new home being built for you gives you the time to know I have a house that I'm moving into and then we can time the sale of your home to coincide. And we have um, arrangements with most of these builders where if we guarantee the sale of your house, they will move forward with building your new home contingent upon your house selling and we have a program where we can do that for people and it's worked very successfully okay now to wrap up the conversation about new construction uh, if you visit our website at welcomehomeabq.com we do have a search on there if you click the search menu there's a place for new construction you can see all the neighborhoods and communities around the city and general price ranges floor yeah, plans exactly yeah. exactly and or Probably the best thing to do, just give us a call, um, 448-8888, Venturi Realty Group with Keller Williams Realty. And and we can help you look at all these different communities and, and see what is going to work best for you. Yep. So we have to talk about some open houses. Okay. We have a house new on the market in Mariposa, which okay. we were just talking about. It's oh, on Ridgeline. Yeah. That is such a spectacular spectacular house you know uh the photographer even mentioned said you yeah. know i see a lot of beautiful they, views and a lot of beautiful homes so this one ridgeline open today open tomorrow get on our website look at our open houses um, make your plan to get out and see that property uh spectacular single story three bedroom um, beautiful kitchen beautiful living spaces so we want to make sure that you know about that. There are several others going on this weekend that we have listed as well as other realtors have listed. So just jump on our website and get on open houses and, and you can see where they are all at and you can make a plan. The house in Mariposa, by the way, which is on an estate lot over an acre, mm -hmm. 775000 and I mean, you couldn't buy that lot and build it for that. It's, oh, no, no, no. Um, you can't. You can't. Spectacular. And call <laughs> us if you want a private showing, <laughs> of course. Cost of construction right now. Right. For, for sure. Right. With, without a doubt. But best way, obviously, is call us, make an appointment. Let's meet you there and let you get a private showing of that property. Tracy, I want to just uh, go back to this thing about is the market slowing? 
because, like I said, there has been some news stories out there implying that maybe the real estate market is slowing down. And it, and it really isn't, uh, even nationally, even in some of these other markets, because the, the story that's actually out there is that inventory is starting to grow a little bit in some parts of the country. It's not that the real estate market is slowing down. Well, and I bet you have stats to prove what you're about to say. Well, what I, I, I just, you know, it's that time of the month where it's mid, mid-month. I wanted to see where we were for July this year versus, uh, in particular, July last year. Because July last year, July 2020, is when the real estate market just went nutty. This was right after COVID, right? So right. March, April, May, June. July, all those people Ju- that June June is when all of a sudden everybody decided it was time to buy a house and there we hadn't had any listings in April, May of last year. Right. Yeah. Things pretty much shut down. So I didn't say I so didn't say my, any it was half the number of new listings, yes. My point is July last year, despite COVID, was a record month. It was the busiest closing month on record for the Albuquerque area, July of twenty twenty. Right. Right now, July of 2021, pendings are up 15% over last year, just in the first 15 days. And the number of closings is about equal with with last year right now. The number of homes on the market, it's down 23% just versus last year. So, yeah, we're... One quarter less houses on the market. We're... It's not slowing down. Definitely not in our market. No, no. So... And there was a, you know, I, I don't know, if, I know you saw it, Tracy, but y'all might have caught it that there was a story in the journal this week where uh, Stephen Hamway does the, the real estate beat, I guess, if you would say. And he called me and got a couple, just, you know, put a few quotes on there. One of them was there's, you know, like I said, the story that there's more homes and the inventory starting to come in and there's more homes on the market. And I, I cautioned him and I'm, I'm glad he printed it that, that it's maybe just seasonal cyclical that you know, we're going to have a little bit of build this time of year. And I think it's going to, you know, just kind of stay flat and probably decline throughout the year. So if you're out there thinking of buying, if if you're thinking that you're going to wait until more homes come on the market later this year, probably not going to happen is, is my call on that. So I'll, right, so I'll just say that. Yeah. Clearly, I mean, yeah. Uh, that wasn't as clear as that I would like for it to be. Okay. Uh, in hearing you. So what you're saying is cyclically every year about this time, more yep. homes are basically delivered. They hit the market. Yep. But even though those homes are coming onto the market, it doesn't mean that there's going to be more opportunity, uh, more houses, more inventory necessarily, that it's going to get uh, uh, absorbed right away. It is. And I don't see generally what happens. Inventory builds up until July, August, if you want to say that. Right. So the number of homes available. And then come July, August, it starts to drop off all the way through till February. Um, is, August, September. And, and that's just the normal seasonal pattern for our market. So those are pre, uh, I imagine those are kind of pre-sell, are they not? Um, because it's through construction. You know, uh, Tracy, yeah. you brought on new con, uh, construction people on board several times. You've had several home builders who have come on. Yeah. And I imagine there's like people beating down their door or something like that. I mean, this is something that you guys work on. You can take people to places uh, where you know that inventory is going to be rolling out. And I got to, I got to say, that's that's worth. Uh, what, what do they say? A bird in the hand. <laughs> yeah, you know that yeah. really is a good opportunity there to jump in. And another reason to to pick up the phone and call uh, Tigo and Tracy Venturi four four eight eighty eight eighty eight. That's four four eight eighty eight eighty eight. And we are live this morning, so if you want to know and get a heads up on where that might potentially could be and uh, delivered. All depends upon the city of Albuquerque, city of Rio Rancho. Uh, just go ahead and give them a call. Thank you for clarifying that. Yeah, no, no, thanks, Eddie. And I want to just bring in one other stat. I don't want to. I don't want to confuse people, but but again, this whole story of oh, you know, home prices are going up way too fast, which I would I would tend to agree with, and and we're going to have a bubble, and prices are going to explode and and go down, and. One of the things we have to look at always is supply versus demand, right? That drives everything in in pricing on, on any any product, in, in homes in particular. And what I found is right now we have about 1,100 homes on the market. In July of 2007, that's when 
let's say the bubble burst back in the day when when home prices started to decline in 2007 at that time we we didn't i'm, I'm trying to say this so i'm so it's more succinct uh, succinct and not not complicated there were we had over 7000 homes on the market in the greater albuquerque area in July of 2007, when prices started to go down. So w prices way to didn't start to shift until we had over 7,000 houses Thank on the you. market. Thank you. That's a great way to put it. So so if you were to just go with that, that one metric, and I know that's just one thing, we would need six times more inventory, as we say, you know, homes available on the market than we currently have before we start to see a shift in pricing. And we could see a shift in pricing well before that, of course, but that's what the history was. We were over exactly. 7,000 houses on the market before we started seeing prices come down Yep. back in 2007. And I've been saying this now for months and months. I keep saying we could have four or 5,000 homes, 6,000 homes on the market tomorrow and still not be in a, a buyer's market. And, you know, it could shift. Let's say we have 4000 on the market, but interest rates change drastically. We could see price changes. We just I know think, from I what think, we hear yeah. politically um, through the economy that they're not planning to do major changes in, in the uh, interest rate, right? So no. that's part of our where we were going. We're going to talk a little bit about the second half of, of this year since we're into it now, right? Yeah. And oh my gosh, you know, how do we do this? We go so fast. We've just got so much to cover. So Tracy, let's just talk about a few predictions from the experts. I'm going to say that the air quote experts. Yes. Um, I, I think uh, 2020, I, I, never mind. I'm not going to go there. I was going to talk about experts in, in the year 2020. Um, so what do what are the real estate you know prediction makers you know what are they saying about the market tracing what are they saying about mortgage rates let's say i know they say mortgage rates will likely increase a little bit by the end of the year but a little bit we're not talking anything major right and based on the announcement this week it doesn't look From like there's Jerome Powell yeah there there's going to be much i mean i know that the fed rate is not necessarily tied to mortgage rates. It's more about the 10-year bond yield that, that ties to mortgage rates. But, you know, as long as the 10 years under 2%, we're still going to see really low uh, mortgage rates. Right. Another end yeah. of year. Mm -hmm. Home so, price appreciation, Tigo? Yeah, home price appreciation from a lot of the different uh, groups out there. So Zellman & Associates, which is one of the big uh, consulting firms in the real estate space, they're, they're seeing 10% year over year for 2021. Uh, nationally. Nationally, 10.6% uh, Mortgage Bankers Association saying over 10%. Uh, National Association of Realtors, our association is saying 9%. Uh, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, uh, Fannie's got it at 8%. Freddie Mac's got it at 66 So, you know, everybody is, is predicting an increase. I saw some numbers from uh, another consulting firm just this week and they're seeing 20 percent year over year increase in median price which is a little bit different than total price appreciation but you know home prices are going up and and and, and back to that whole thing about the market and the market slowing i think the one thing that will slow this market down is we just get way too far ahead of ourselves on home prices where people can't you know they just can't make it work um but, you know, it, and then you got this whole thing, Tracy, it's like, well, everybody's got to live somewhere. You either got to rent or you got to buy or you got to live with family or whatever. Right. Back to the whole conversation about, you know, um, uh, multi-generational housing. Right. And what we know is rent rates have gone up significantly, too. So it's, even though the home prices have gone up, it's still mostly cheaper to buy than to rent for it the not, same type of house. There, There is so much research and there's so many good studies that talk about how you know home ownership it, 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 let me put it this way home ownership owning a home is affordable housing compared to renting right right plus building the nest egg and so what yeah. about inventory for the rest of the year i think 
what are nationally, the experts predicting Yeah, what the, the experts are predicting is nationally that there's going to be a, a slight increase in the number of homes coming in into the market. Um, we're, we're seeing that in a lot of other you know parts of the country. Um, I'm going to make the call here locally that we're going to go through the end of this month into August. Inventory is going to stay flat, maybe increase a little bit, and then start to decline. Okay. That's my call. Okay. Uh, bottom line? Bottom line is that, you know, mortgage rates are going to stay flat or go up slightly. No big spikes in the future. Um, inventory is going to go up slightly, but but not enough to really create a, a buyer's market. You know, unless, you know, very some some places around the country, but but we're not seeing it here. Um, and, and for the most part, everybody's pretty optimistic about the real estate mar- market. Totally. So, Chico, I had the opportunity this week, you know, just as we finish up and wrap yeah. up here this week. I just love to talk about what we do. Right. So I had the opportunity. I don't get out working with buyers and sellers too much because I'm usually in the office helping train Fire, people. Fi- and- firefighting. Not really. I'm, you know, <laughs> coaching, mentoring. Yeah, no, that's you know, what you do. Yeah. Working transactions from the back end type of stuff. And I had the opportunity to, to go and meet with a, a potential home seller in Las Lunas this week. Um, it was a really fun. I mean, the drive there is so quick. We're in northwest Albuquerque. It took me 35 minutes to get there. It was beautiful. I had time to listen to a podcast. I had time to look what, at Wait, wait, wait. You weren't listening to Kiva on your way? Come on. Oh, did you hear sorry. that, Eddie? No. Yeah, so, I, I, did, I did hear that. Man. You were, what do you mean you weren't listening to? <laughs> You're listening to, to Kiva 24-7. Yeah, moving right along. It was just awesome. Yeah, I, 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 think, I think that's wonderful that you're yeah. growing, growing your mind and growing your brain. By the way, folks, uh, we are live here, 448-8888. That's 448-8888, welcomeonbbq.com. Uh, last five minutes here of the show. So, right. Okay. So, so anyway, I'm in you're Las Lunas, and okay. I took different routes this time. Roads I haven't been on probably in ten years. I was like, I'm sure I've driven these before because I've done a lot of work in Las Lunas and helped a lot of buyers and sellers in Las Lunas. But you know the rural feel of some of those roads and the opportunities. You know, half acre parcels with some lush green. land, yep. green, and a yep. lot of uh, the, the houses that I've worked with over the years there, outside of, you know, Hewning Ranch and the big um, production built neighborhoods, you know, a lot of them have a two car garage out back in addition to what they have with the house. So they've mm-hmm. got workshop space, yep. Yep. Um, they have animals. It's it's just reminded me of what a great small town Las Lunas is and the different opportunities there along the river. There's a lot going on. I was at a, a conference where the economic development kind of person for Las Lunas was there talking, or Valencia County, talking about what's going on. They got a lot of stuff in the works. Obviously, the Facebook thing, I mean, that's not a bunch of jobs, but it's a big facility that's, you know, kind of high profile. They've got a whole business park um, uh, set aside just west of that, that right. Facebook. There, there's a train park, train like I don't even know what they like call it. Like a rail spur? Yeah, like not a rail no, spur, a like train. a train like business park, but specifically for for the train um, business. The like, rail the rail like bi- rail it's not repair. the train business, it's the rail business. There what is it go. called? It's something like that. Anyway, the they've rails. got that plan. Um and and people will be glad to know this, there is uh, funding in place now for a second uh, interstate exit in Las Lunas. It's just going to be south of the the, main the, one? the, the current one. Um, closer down to the prison. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah is, is where that, that will. So there will be another, you know, exit in a river crossing um, to help with some of that traffic on uh, in Las Lunas, which is right. kind of, it's kind of silly that you would think that there's traffic in Las Lunas, but there definitely is. Yeah. Definitely I, and is. I also had the opportunity, like I said, I was in Mariposa this week. A lot of new homes going up there, both custom, semi-custom, as well as, you know, Pulte and Speaking of traffic, the... the D.R. Horton has a great new neighborhood there. Traffic? Traffic in Mariposa and North Rio Rancho and in that area, you know, getting through Bernalillo used to be pretty difficult, but that's well, mostly fixed, no. but there's still work going on. No, it's exceptionally difficult right now. Well, okay. If you're trying to commute right now from North Rio Rancho to I-25. Shows you what I know. 
they but, are but doing. But they've been working on it for two years. It's it's I think maybe a year or so in. They still have a good year to go. Okay. They've got a major interchange so going there. That's going to be just fabulous. But it's slowing people down right now. You know my favorite place, the Hyatt Tamaya. Um, oh, yeah, because right. we, because we've been out there a few times, we've been through that intersection. That's Tigo true. has, you know, he, we don't let him out of the office, Eddie. But I have taken him up to the Hyatt for some beautiful meals and walks down in the yeah. Bosque. Um, so it's beautiful over there. And uh, Bob, if there's availability, I would definitely call Tigo and Tracy. They know that area well. Albuquerque is growing, and the uh, metro area is growing. I do want to say something demographically uh, to the two of you, and just so everybody really understands the opportunity that exists in uh, Rio Rancho. I mean, we are landlocked. Mountains, those beautiful mountains you see, people need to understand that. So everything does ha happen at a premium. Uh, we're landlocked on uh, both going north and south. We have the Isleta uh, Reservation on one side, and then on the other side, we have the Sandia Reservation, which goes uh, for a good seven miles before you get to uh, Bernalillo. And then going out west, well, you know that you have the petroglyphs. So yep. there's this nice little area known as Rio Rancho. And for the population demographics, which the census should be coming in this week, I'm not sure if either one of you know this, but I'm sure, I'm sure you've, you've heard me talk about it. But uh, Rio Rancho can actually grow to about 400 to 450,000 people. Uh, and if it's going to grow anywhere, uh, the, the metropolis of, Rio, of Albuquerque, excuse me, is going to grow uh, out towards Rio Rancho. So just something to pay attention there are people moving to uh, New Mexico. I think we've had, if I could speak about this just for a moment, one murder in all of Rio Rancho this year. So mm -hmm. that, that we, I've certainly been talking about crime and things like that. No, so, you have been, and 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 we, you know, I I think it's good because that that is, I think, we hear that Eddie when people are relocating, you know, relocating, thinking about yep. coming to New Mexico. Obviously, that's always you know top of people's mind unfortunately and uh, i'm i'm glad you continue to hammer on it because it it needs to get better yeah and uh, it is going to get better i can i can see it going forward but rio rancho corrales uh certainly as much as i'm a fan of corrales and uh, certainly uh, out towards bernalillo it's beautiful folks there's availability and there is land and uh, Tracy can help you walk you through some construction stuff. And Tigo will tell you where all the market stats are. Tigo, Tracy, one more time. How can people reach you? 448-8888. Call Erin today. She's waiting for it. And welcome home, abq.com, the best website Tigo takes care of. Yeah. There you go. Tigo, Tracy, thanks for being here live on a Saturday morning. When we return, Mike Ramos will be back here in the Eve. We're going to get you qualified as well with Chris Napier. We'll uh, talk a little bit with Walt Arnold. And then after that, we'll be doing a live edition of Dr. William Summers, as well as Michael Trujillo and taking care of your money with your Money Matters.